Hello, my name is Jordan Schwab. I'm the instructor for this course, and it was recommended since I can't be there in person that I give you a little introduction to myself so you have an understanding of where I'm coming from and my practice as well as my interest in sculpture. So I'm originally from Prince George, BC. Uh, if you've ever been there, we have a mascot. He's a giant uh, logger. I think that might have been one of the reasons I'm interested in sculptures. We have these kind of, you know, to have a mascot that's sort of this giant thing uh, really interests me right away in uh, giant three-dimensional objects. I worked in a lot of uh, industry when I was younger, going through school and even after school. Uh, so I was a construction worker and then uh, we do a lot of work in big industrial sites like pulp mills and stuff like that. And in Prince George, there's uh, th three pulp mills, a bunch of sawmills, uh, chemical plants, all that kind of stuff. So very working class town, uh, something I was kind of intimately involved with and still sort of am. Uh, my dad is very involved in that kind of stuff. Moved out to Saskatchewan in uh, 2007. Play a lot of soccer, joined the Peruvian soccer team, bought a tiny house. Uh, before moving out, about the same time, I had my May, first major project uh, at the Prince George Art Gallery. Uh, I constructed a model of my parents' house, um, scale model, so it's one quarter size. I scaled down all the two by four, all that kind of stuff, kind of trying to take this house back to a, uh, an earlier time without any renos, without any kind of attachments, without any kind of memories on it. Uh, it was my friend Terry standing in front for his little scale. Uh, but that's sort of where I began, sort of my interest, getting into 3D. And that was just after my bachelor's, which I completed at Thompson Rivers University. Uh, and then I went to Saskatchewan to complete my master's of fine arts. I have now moved back to BC. Uh, I just moved back this year. Uh, I'm now in Quesnel, BC, which is just about an hour and a half south of Prince George. And Quinnell doesn't have a giant lager, we have a giant gold pan. Its uh, claim is to be the world's largest gold pan, although it hasn't been used yet, so I guess it, it doesn't meet the Guinness Book of World Records. Interesting place, uh, much smaller, but again, similar to Prince George, so something I'm familiar with, and I, there's an opportunity for you know me to get back to see some family and that kind of stuff, but luckily, or unluckily enough with this COVID thing, I am able to deliver this course remotely, and so continue doing what I was loving to do. Uh, my master's in uh, at the U of S I completed in 2009. Uh, my main focus was on understanding this idea of entropy. Uh, Robert Smithson, if you get into some of the lectures, you're going to understand, had this interest in entropy, which is basically this idea of time and progression of time and its sort of effects on, on materials. Uh, and then looking at my own background in construction, I was interested in this idea of uh, thinking about entropy, but somehow showing or disrupting this idea. So showing processes or plans in progress uh, so that you're never really sure which is the beginning and which is the end. So I kind of saw that as a way to interrupt this idea of a uh, continuous timeline by having a less linear timeline. So I was developing drawings and plans and blueprints and uh, sculptural interventions that I would do in and around the town, or sometimes just simply uh, with something like uh, this hotel or, or this uh, bobcat just sort of taking photos of things that I thought were sort of sculptural interventions. So you'll find that in one of the projects is where maybe this is a little bit coming from. Uh, after I finished my master's, uh, still kind of working within the same realms of my own practice and that stuff uh, from my master's, but I also uh, collaborated with a uh, friend, Patrick Voulis. He's the printmaking technician at the US. So if anybody gets to take printmaking and sometime in the future, uh, you'll get an opportunity to meet Patrick. We had a, uh, a collaboration where we we're questioning the process of printmaking. Patrick's a printmaker and myself, I'm not. So we were looking at different ways that we were making uh, prints. We were just looking at different ways of using force. That's the basic idea behind a print. And then uh, our process was to show the actual print blocks and then our different effects that we, uh, our different prints that we created. They weren't perfect like a printmaker would make. They were more one-off sort of uh, ephemeral uh, items. Uh, we would drop uh, plates with uh, uh, on bricks off of buildings. We uh, ran a truck into a wall. We used uh, 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 asphalt rollers and all sorts of different, uh, you know, industrial equipment, that kind of thing to make our prints. And we also had a, a collaboration with our food truck where we went around to a few different festivals and, and people could uh, high five Patrick and try to make a print of some sort of food. A little bit fun, but also just really interested in sort of teaching and uh, people about the process of printmaking.
Still in Saskatoon sometime. This is probably about uh, 20, 2013, 2014, something like that. Uh, I had a project at AKA Artist Run Center. I was really interested in uh, Mount Blackstrap, which is just outside of Saskatoon. Uh, coming from BC, being around mountains, traveling to mountains all the time, I found it interesting that it was called a mountain. Uh, it was just basically a garbage pile on top of a coulee. Uh, but my project, I was interested in this idea of scale and also this idea of communities kind of coming together to get to get a project finished. Uh, the slogan for the 1970 uh, Canada Games that were winter games that were held in Saskatoon was going to build a mountain because the only thing that Saskatoon didn't have for the winter games was a ski hill. Uh, so my process of thinking was sort of making this abstract mountain of the ski hill that uh, was sort of breaking down or building up at the same time. And in it, there were small little uh, scale references and models and, and the photos were of uh, different uh, construction hills or ant hills or different sort of uh, relationships to scale. Uh, you can see here, I've got little, little mountains and little things like that. And then uh, this sort of process of building up the mountain. Uh, 2016-ish or something like that, I was asked to by the Ramey Art Gallery to uh, work with a community member that uh, was uh, had backyard chickens, uh, sort of this, they were illegal backyard chickens, I guess they still are in Saskatoon. Uh, this is when the a gallery is being built and there was this, uh, for me, it was this interesting opportunity because I was asked to make some sort of object that could work as a chicken coop. And then I was interested in the construction of the gallery itself. And then this was being held at the farmer's market. And so I was int really interested in creating some sort of mimetic relationship uh, between the new gallery, which is across the street, and then my chicken coop gallery. It was my idea of giving the chickens an opportunity to have an art gallery of their own. Uh, another interesting project, which has really fallen into this, my interest when I was in my master's, I really researched a lot about uh, land artists and stuff like that that were in the States. Uh, and then I've had an opportunity to go out and see a few of the different uh, land art pieces from the, the 60s and 70s. Uh, I got to go and see Michael Heiser's uh, double negative. Uh, I had a project at Paved Arts in Saskatoon um, where I tried to create this comparison between uh, double negative, which is this really famous uh, land art piece, and then uh, the Great Wall of Saskatchewan, which is this wall that's just outside of Smiley, Saskatchewan, just outside of Kindersley. Uh, the wall itself was built by a farmer. He basically collected all the rocks and he's built about a kilometer long wall. And I was interested that in the grand scheme of things over time, thinking about entropy, thinking about that kind of stuff, this wall was more likely going to last for a thousand years than double negative was. Double negative itself was already collapsing in, uh, whereas the uh, wall it, it itself was you know, quite sturdy and it, it's probably gonna stay there or have some sort of uh, uh, remainder there for probably a thousand years somebody will be able to find that that wall at some point so it's interesting that you know they're both giant land art pieces they both have significance but one you know with the uh, double negative because it's this world famous artist has some sort of uh, even though it's going to last less has some sort of more significance than this piece that over time is going to last longer so it's trying to draw some sort of correlation between the two uh, few random different projects here. Uh, I was asked, well, I took part in a residency at uh, Linda Duvall. She's a Saskatchewan based artist. Uh, she had a residency at her farm uh, and you could propose to sit in this hole with her for a few days and do some sort of project. I proposed that I would dig the hole deeper. Uh, Chris Burden is an American artist. Uh, he came up uh, to Emily Carr and to give an artist talk and instead of an artist talk, he, he chose to dig a trench and so I, I proposed the same thing and rather than having a residency I would just dig a hole and then at the end of the uh, end of the residency they had all the participants and the different galleries come out and they all got to participate and, and uh, my hole was used as an echo chamber for singing and then in my background even in Saskatoon whether I was working as an instructor uh, I also worked at Sky Up, Saskatoon Community Arts Programming so doing mural paintings so if you think about the last slide I've, I've done a lot of giant murals around town um, but I had a contracting company uh, doing different random projects and I had a project uh, lifting a garage and putting in a studio and uh, trying to waterproof it. And then thinking along the same lines of the digging or, or other processes of, you know, this labor that is put out. 
I tried to create this project where I tried to show uh, myself as the one uh, lifting this uh, this project using some of the remnant materials um, from the actual construction. Uh, 2018, I uh, was asked to uh, participate in a large project for AK Artist Run Center. AK Artist Run uh, had a project with in conjunction with CHEP, uh, with the Good Food Box people in Saskatoon, and they were uh, proposing having some sort of uh, gathering point um, to sort of have community members interact in and around the Riversdale area, uh, maybe sell food. Uh, do artwork, have youth kind of come in and participate with, uh, and, you know, different members in the community, uh, laid very long along the lines of a social practice. And so I was asked, I was asked to create some sort of sculptural, uh, you know, gathering space. And so in thinking about it, I, I decided to gather, create some sort of table. So a mobile table where these carts could be carried around by the, the youth that were going to be working with the project and then set up this sort of gathering point uh, for anybody in the community. And then with a sort of sales piece uh, for the Chet people to sell food. And I tried to make correlations between uh, what was happening in the neighborhood. I lived right in the neighborhood in Riversdale, just outside in Caswell Hill, just across 22nd. And I could see the difference in the last 10 years of what had happened to the neighborhood as it was sort of changing and growing or gentrifying. And so I was seeing this correlation between the two, uh, not only in the artist center, but also in the, the people that didn't want it, the, the neighborhood to change and, and this sort of battle and this split. And so I tried to make the two tables this sort of split, sort of this old, old uh, space and this new space that was being jammed together and having to work together. And then in concerns with the, the food uh, desert that is in, Sas in Riversdale, um, I was sort of drawing this, this point where there was and there always has been different food spaces uh, in, in and around Riversdale, but you know the issue in that area is not so much maybe the lack, lack of food, but for most of, uh, most of the people in the area, it was a lack of finances. Uh, and you could see that in downtown, I had this sort of map where I went and researched all the locations of previous uh, grocery stores. And downtown used to have upwards of 25 grocery stores, but they've all sort of gone and passed on as, as different people's different income levels sort of changed and the grocery stores no longer became profitable. Uh, you can see here the uh, carts sort of work together and sort of created this train that could be pulled around. So planning has always been part of my process. Uh, I think I try to reinforce that a lot in the, the lecture uh, about planning sculpture. Uh, but it becomes sort of this way for me to think out ideas, to kind of create ideas, and to uh, you know think of ideas that I might not be able to actually do, but it, it, it doesn't matter because I think that's the most uh, fun about art. Uh, while still exploring some of my interests in entropy and the environment, different things like that. Uh, here I have my, I think my favorite plan is uh, my neighbor, Billy. Uh, I had a neighbor in Saskatoon. He was uh, quite the character. I, I, his yard was uh, kind of a giant horde. Um, really interesting guy. I kind of liked him as a neighbor, but his, he just kept on building shacks upon shacks, trying to protect his, his stuff that he collected around the city. Uh, and then, so I kind of created this sculpture thinking about his yard, trying to, you know, interpret his yard as one piece. And this is my model right here. And then I, I like thinking about plans in different ways, like not only in this idea of a blueprint or in, in models, but also in uh, you know steps. So here at this top piece, I was thinking about uh, an actual event that had happened to me where I had an unfortunate run-in with someone and they had a loaded shotgun in their bag and ended up going off and kind of taking out, uh, I think, my eardrum for a little bit. Um, so seeing how you could take like an actual event and turn it into some sort of plan or some sort of process. So this idea of planning becomes sort of that my my practice i'm able to almost take my my different interests and different ideas whether it be entropy or thinking about the environment or something like that and actually uh you know create plans around that idea and my work currently uh i've been trying to figure out sort of my I got interested when 
uh, you know, thinking about this idea of planning and stuff, but also thinking about our my 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 own imprint on the environment. Um, I started trying to figure out what my carbon footprint was, and I had been writing an article that that stated that our our how much carbon uh, each Canadian sort of put out into the world on average for a year. And doing some math, I was able to figure out that my my actual like volume of carbon that I put out something that you know they talk about, but you never actually get to have a visual. And so I was trying to figure out a visual was uh, this basically this sort of 10 by 10 giant structure. Uh, that's about a daily's output, a daily output of us uh, for our carbon uh, footprint. You know, if you imagine the carbon sort of floating around in that space, that's how much we're sort of putting out in the air. Uh, and so I've had this this sort of process working with this frame, and then you know beyond just thinking about having some sort of way of uh, kind of holding or showing this thing, this idea of this frame became interesting to me because it became started to look almost like some sort of like drawing in space. A uh, way to sort of represent this uh, human presence or something in the space, and so I've been currently working on a lot of uh, drawings and plans and and different interventions using this sort of framework as the beginning, and kind of carrying on from there. It's not where I don't know where it's going, and I'm not sure where it's going to you know in the end what it's going to be, but uh, that's usually how it works for any kind of uh, research. You kind of start with an idea and go from there. So. Uh, it's just a picture of my dog. You'll see a lot of pictures of Shadow kind of showing up uh, in all the different lecture videos. I just figured it was a good way to maybe lighten up some of this learning. Um, he's the, you know, I, I love my wife, but this is my dog that just kind of hangs out with me all day and uh, helps me make all these videos. And uh, he forces me out into different areas. We go walking and exploring. And so uh, this is just a few of his little shots and, uh, you know, his day. So enjoy the videos. Okay, I hope that gives you an understanding of where I'm coming from. And if you got any questions or other things you'd like to ask me about, or if you'd like to look at more of my work, uh, my website is www.jordanschwabartist.com. All right, thank you.